the fastest developing community in St. Lucia. Also home to the largest collection of island hotels, the area is known as the leisure capital of the island. Even in the town of Grosley is surrounded by tourism development, the community continues to boost this village atmosphere and fishing routes. Grosley extends to the end of the island in the north where you will find the large scale of developments of catered communities, hotels and the largest golf course on the island. Welcome to Grosley. Grosley starts from the Shock Roundabout all the way to Cafe State and indeed it is one of the largest constituencies. We can see developments in Marshy, Corinth and Grosley Town. And don't forget the chicken vans on Bontier Gap. There's never a dull moment in the town of Grosley or in the constituency of Grosley. From the street party to Rodney Bay. So be sure to stop in Grosley when visiting St. Lucia. which is going to be telling us a bit about Grosley. And of course we know that Grosley does not only consist of the town, but many environs. Just tell me a bit about Grosley and the environs surrounding it. Well, Grosley actually begins from Shock, from the Shock River, and extends up to Capestit. And we have from Dauphin down to the Caribbean Sea here. And you have the north, northernmost part of Grosley, comprising Capestit, Grosley Town, Casaba, Bosejou, Ridgeway, Rodney Bay, you know, and uh, Bonte. You have uh, Moshi with its environs, the Ramu, Labon, Riviera Mita, communities like Lafay, uh, Kaimaji. Then you have Grand Riviere with many small communities as well, like Piat, Monsepa, De Garçon, Asu Canal, uh, Monier, and you have Corent, Marisil, Guadarache. So it is very extensive, quite a number of communities, many of them housing developments. Right. You know, it is not just vast, it's not just a vast expanse of land, but it is pretty much developed. You find residential areas throughout the constituency, resulting in many roads and many areas for maintenance and upkeep. Right. Yeah. With such a diverse community, how difficult is it to maintain it? Well, it is a challenge, yes, but uh, I guess as a parliamentary representative, you know, one must be adaptable and flexible to be able to deal with it because if you look at Grosley, you have urban, you have rural, right. you have suburban, and so you go the whole gamut in terms of you know, diversity when it comes to this constituency. Here with Nigel at Nigel's bar. Hi Nigel. How are we doing Nadia? I'm good. So Nigel was born and raised and bred and everything in the town of Grosely. So he, how has Grosely changed as a town? Yeah, it has changed as a, a town for quite a while. It's over five or six years now. We've got like we got a street party going on for over 20 something to 30 years. We've got Next time we have the, the build a new jetty that's about six or ten years back. So there's a lot of changes that have been made, either the outer skirt of Gozil also. And what made you open a bar in Gozil? Uh, well, the town especially, because we know Gozil starts from shop, uh, so was, in the town. That was always my wish. Yeah, from, from childhood, after school, after I finished my schooling, I, I, because I've been running that bar for over 30 to 40 years from the time I left school. Now I'm 61, I'm still around. Running, your bar. running my bar. And how, has, how do you feel as if your bar has made an influence to the town of Grosely? Yeah, it has made a lot of influence to the town of Grosely. Yeah, especially, especially visitors. I've got a lot of visitors from Martinique, England. Some of them even say, anytime you come down, come down by Nigel's bar. Nigel will treat you good. Yeah. I've got a lot of friends all around. And what impact do you think that the street party has on your bar? 
Because this is like the biggest thing happening in the town of Grizzly. What impact do you think this has on your it, The street party carries a lot of revenue. Yeah, because it, not, it don't really have an impact on my bar. Because everybody is trying to achieve a dollar. Right? So to me, the street party creates all the all the atmosphere it creates it. So you you everybody, some people vendoring, some people doing the little chicken on the side, some sell cigars, some sell nuts. Everybody's getting buttered. Found at the north of the island, Grosley can be considered the epic district of the Grosley town. Friday night street jump up to Rodney Bay, home of the island nightlife, to Pigeon Island, filled with heritage of St. Lucia early settlers. To the Darren Sami cricket grounds and many beaches to choose from, there's never a dull moment when visiting Grosley. Grosley is known for its nightlife, but here to share with us about its heritage, about Pigeon Island National Landmark and Mount Pavio is Dania George. Good day. Hi, thanks for having me. Just tell us a bit about Pigeon Island National Landmark. Okay, I, I think Pigeon Island is among the more well-known sites in St. Lucia. It has a long history going pre-Columbian before the Europeans got here. I think the first European settlers were the French. They were a group of pirates who stayed at Pigeon Island and intercepted boats going by north and south. So if we go diving, we may find some gold or some <laughs> precious stones below the sea down by Pigeon Island. But it has, Pigeon Island is just like St. Lucia, the tumultuous history of St. Lucia. Um, going back and forth between the French and the English or the British and um, escaped slaves also uh, made their way to Pigeon Island. One we're not really familiar with is Mount Pavio. Uh, what is about Mount Pavio? Okay, um, across um, if you go north from Pigeon Island into Cap Estates, um, you will get Mont Pavillon. That is another site that is owned by the Trust. It's actually owned by the Trust. It was donated by an American family, the Lutzes, and they were concerned about the rapid pace of development in Cap Estates. And they were seeing all green spaces disappearing. And they were, I guess, environmentalists, and they wanted some place to remain green and eco and that the public could access. So that was Mont Pavillon. It is a little over 20 acres. Um, it's mostly like dry um, coastal um, ecosystems. Um, there are, it's good for bird watching, so very early in the morning. Um, if you would like to do a bird watching tour, you could contact the trust and we could arrange that. It's also, there is a walking trail and um, just for meditating and relaxing because it's a very quiet spot. In the middle of all of the development in Cap Estate, you have this quiet spot that's perfect for retreats and just, you know, just finding yourself, finding inner peace. <laughs> yeah, and you have the great views of Rodney Bay and um, going all the way down, um, just past Rodney Bay, Windjammer. You know, you get a nice view of the northwest coast from, from Juan Pavio. I have my fellow Jacques Rosillet, Kerville. Kerville, yes. And you are? Thai. <laughs> nice meeting you, Thai. Again. Yeah, of Literally, I just met Kovil. Yeah, and exactly. we were just chit chatting. Chien and, and he was telling me so much about how he's in the tourism industry, industry and how it has from... benefited you. So just, you know, tell me. Well, of course, I mean, it, it benefited me well. I mean, still surviving, going through it still. I mean, used to be a caddy, working in the hotels. Like, as you can see, with our backgrounds, I'm still there. Okay. How long have you been in the tourism industry from, and what made you get into the tourism industry? Why you chose well, that sector? Okay, it came from the family, my mother, them. They did work in the hotels before when growing up. They wanted me to continue that trench and then it is, let's say, something natural or then in us. But then now, now that I'm there with Rodney B. Marina, as you all can see, I work in the marine industry as to in the yachting section. I'm a diver by profession, which I have done, bartender, I that I trade, trade yeah, okay. that's that. What was your first job? My first job, actually growing up in Grosile, my first job I cannot really remember. We used to come and pull in the nets as to when they used to catch the nets. Mm -hmm. 
people in the nets, they could not chase me out of there. Growing up when the Friday night started, you know, picking up them little bottles on the road, that was some form of income coming at home. You know, when my mother would want to look for me, she would know where to find me, exactly, in Grozile. So then, you understand, from there, as you can see, Grozile still, we still have the mini hotels, we have the fishing going for us. It is still a fishing village. We're not calling it a village anymore, but then, you understand. What would you say is the biggest economic generator in the constituency of Brazil? Well, most definitely tourism. You have a number of hotels around. You have um, the water sports again attached to the tourism. Many of our people are into the taxi service. You have restaurants, right. who, uh, many of whom depend on the, the tourists. And of course, we have. I, I am prepared to bet that we probably have the most bars in this country. I mean, just on the street that I live, we have about 15 bars. Wow. So, you know, we have quite a lot of bars as well. So, the Friday night street party, well known. It is a revenue generator as well for people of Grosile. So, fishing, we still have an element of fishing, but not on the scale that it used to be before. In the past, we were predominantly a fishing village, but now that is not so, so prominent. And, of course, agriculture is negligible in this area. So, basically, this is what our economic activity centered around. What would you see would bring agriculture to the community of Brazil? Because it has so much going on for it already. Well, I mean with all of the development that has you know presented a challenge to continue practicing agriculture because I mean you need land to, to Right and we are already covered with so many nightlights and That's bars. Right. So agriculture is not really a zone for the North of the island. Right. However you still have communities like Labon parts of Moshi, you know, where people still practice agriculture. I'm here with Jeffrey and Jeffrey is an expat. Jeffrey is just going to be telling us a little bit about why he chose St. Lucia. Hi Jeffrey. Hello, how are you today? I'm good and you? I'm wonderful, thank you darling. Tell me a little bit about why did you choose to settle in St. Lucia? Well this place, you know, it's a beautiful island there. There's everything you could ask for. The beautiful food, the wonderful landscape, the beautiful sea, you know. Where else to choose? How long did it take you to realize that you wanted to settle down in St. Lucia? Well, you know, I came here originally in 2010. I spent some time there, here, back, 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 but many different islands, this was the one. And do you miss home by any chance? You know, the only thing I miss about home is my nephews, my nieces, my, my family there, but other than that, you got everything you'd ask for here. And what country are you originating from? Originally from America, California. 